Hi, this is Joe, and thank you for coming back for another video. In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the battery in the Jetson Bolt Pro. You're just going to need a few tools, and don't worry, I'm going to step you through every single step of the way. It might be a little bit involved, but it's not going to be hard. And again, I'm going to walk you through every step. You're more than capable of doing this replacement yourself. There will be a little bit of soldering, but again, don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Let's start out with what initial tools we need. Of course you're going to need your battery that you're going to replace. You're going to need a cross point screwdriver. You're going to need a small pair of needle nose pliers. And you're going to need a standard straight blade small screwdriver. If you don't have any tools, the cheapest way to purchase tools is to go over to Harbor Freight Tools. You can purchase your tools there. If you don't want to buy import tools, you can go to your big box stores like Lowell's or Home Depot and you can purchase a little bit higher quality tools. For example, I like cobalt tools and I like the Husky tools at Home Depot. They're very nice tools, good quality. They have a lifetime warranty. Nice uh, quality tools, very cheap. So the first thing we need to do is remove the cover to where the battery and controller are located. If you look on the left hand side of the e-bike you'll notice the plastic cover here. At various points around this cover, notice this is your charge plug right here, you'll notice there's little rubber plugs at several points. We're going to need to take the small screwdriver and we're going to have to gently pry out these plugs. These are basically to keep moisture and water out of the screw area. So what we need to do is take our little screwdriver and sometimes these are a pain to get out. You want to try to get underneath the screwdriver on the edge and try to pry that out. And you may have to even come in, take your needle those pliers, pinch it and pull the plug out. Once you take all your components out, get yourself a little container, coffee cup, paper cup, whatever you have. Take your parts and put them in the container. That way you won't knock them off your workbench, you won't lose them. When it comes time to put everything back together, you'll know right where the parts are. Now, as you're taking things apart, disassembly and reassembly can sometimes be complicated. So what I do, is I use my cell phone and not so much in the case of taking the cover off we know how that is but if you're disconnecting wires removing components always take a picture of the parts or part or parts and how they're assembled how the wires are connected that way when you go to reassemble all you have to do is look at your pictures and you'll be able to tell the proper assembly of those components. Even I, at this point, if I'm taking something apart, I will snap a lot of pictures because, again, a couple days later, a couple weeks later, you may forget how things go back together, and then you have to guess, or then you have to go do some research. So it's always a safe idea to take pictures of your disassembly so that when you go back to put it back together, you know exactly what goes where and how all the wires connect so let's go ahead and pull all the little rubber plugs out from the cover. Once you have all the rubber plugs, you want to now take your cross point screwdriver and you want to start removing all the screws. Doesn't matter where you start. As the screws come out, put them in your container.
Hold that panel with your hand. Remove the final screw. Now when you remove the cover, be very gentle because your charging plug is going to be connected to this cover. So when you pull it down, just gently let it rest on your workbench. So now we've exposed underneath the cover. This is your motor controller right here. This is the battery right here. Really, inside of an electric bike, it's very simple. You have a controller to control your speed, regulate the volt voltage and current coming from the battery, and that then supplies the current through this, these wires here to the motor. So at this point, what we want to do is we want to loosen, there's two screws here. Now before we do that, if you're going to purchase a different battery from the one I have, you want to make sure to measure this battery, the overall length, the height, and the depth. You want to get a battery that's going to fit inside of these clamps and properly fit within the space that they've provided. So in this case, I've tried to purchase a battery that is exactly the same size or in this case slightly smaller. So what you want to do, there's several options and I'll go over those options here in a little bit on what you can purchase and where you can purchase your battery from depending on how comfortable you are purchase, purchasing from overseas. And what you want to do, measure everything in millimeters or centimeters because a lot of the batteries, even on Amazon, their specifications are given in millimeters. So in this case I have a, a Milwaukee small tape measure that has both SAE measurements and metric measurements. In this case we have a battery that has a length of about 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters it has a depth of 7 centimeters or 70 millimeters And we have 8.5 mill or centimeters, or 80 and a half millimeters. So you want to write those numbers down, and that way, when you go to order a battery, you want to keep within the dimensions, or slightly smaller. Now there is a battery out on Amazon that meets the qualifications of the specifications, except that it's a little bit thicker. This was uh, about actually 70. Well, actually, that the battery on Amazon will fit. So there's a couple different places. Again, we'll get into where you can purchase the batteries and the different options for purchasing batteries. So at this point, we've written down our measurements. Now what we can do is there are two. Phillips head or cross point head screws at the top. The top two screws are loosened. Now we want to get the bottom two. But there's one word of caution. When you loosen the final screw, the battery's going to want to fall out. We still have to disconnect the battery from the controller and from the charging port right here. So as we loosen this we want to make sure we catch that battery before it falls. We don't want to damage these wire connectors. Remove the clamp 
we can set that off to the side. Hold that battery in your hand. Now if you notice, there's a little connector right here. Now we can remove the cover safely and set it off to the side. The wires coming from the battery looks like there's an unused harnessed connector right here and that's a very uncommon a lot of these controllers have different features that aren't being used so you may see some wire connectors that aren't connected to anything so what we're looking for here is we're looking for a red and black connector that goes to the controller now it looks like they've used some zip ties here to hold all these wire connectors and harnesses together so I was trying to find the wire without cutting those zip ties but we're going to cut the zip ties so we can get at that connector it appears to be buried in this bundle don't worry about it very easy to, to disconnect and to put back together we're going to cut the zip ties Now, as you notice, when we unravel the wire harness, the battery is connected to a yellow and black connector. This connector is called an XT60 connector. The 60 refers to the amount of amps that this connector can carry. So as you see here, we now have a loose battery. We can now grab onto the leads and we can now disconnect that XT60 connector. Now the nice thing about these connectors is one side is flat and the other side is round. If you'll notice the red wire is connected to the flat side. This way you can't plug your wires in backwards and burn out your motor or controller. So at this point we can now set the battery off to the side. The current video is getting a bit long, so we're going to split this up into s several sections. So thank you for watching the first part, and we'll see you in the next video.